Here is your review video for your test on factoring. Uh, we're going to kind of jump around a little bit to different problems just to show which ones work in what ways. Uh, one and two are very straightforward. Those are just your basic factoring of a, of a trinomial. The way you read is from right to left. So in this case, what multiplies to 72 and subtracts to give you 1. Okay. In this case, the answer is going to be 9 and 8. If you're unsure, start writing them all out. Do 72 divided by 1 is 72. 72 divided by 2 is 36. 72 divided by 3 is uh, 24. And just keep on going the whole way down until you get to the values that work. Uh, you can do 72 divided by 4 is 19. 72 divided by 5 doesn't work. 72 divided by 6 would be 12. 72 divided by 7 doesn't work. 72 divided by 8 gives you 9. Once you get to this point, my next number would be 9. Well, I've already done 9. I kind of make this U. That's my full chart. I can't find any other factor pairs that will work. But of these factor pairs, which one of those subtract give you 1 is 8 and 9. Do you have to do this for every one? No. But it will always work if you can't figure out what pair of numbers is going to be correct. So pair of parentheses, x in each, your numbers are 8 and 9. Bigger number always gets the sign in front, so in this case the negative. Negative times what gives you a negative 72, but well, that would be a positive. So positive 8, negative 9. Number 2, we're in it the same way. Then two numbers that multiply to 28 and subtract to 5, those two values are going to be 8 and 3. So x with 8, x with 3. Bigger number is the 8, it gets the sign in front. And then positive times what gives you a negative, it'll be negative 3. So x plus 8, x minus 3. <clears throat> Let's jump down to number 6 because it's a similar problem. Uh, 30, factors that multiply to 32 and subtract to 4 are going to be 8 and 4. So x with 8, x with 4. We're liking 8 a lot right now. Bigger number is 8. It gets the sign in front, which is negative. Negative times positive gives you a negative. Okay, let's look at 4 and 7 because they're both very similar. You only have two terms going on in these guys. Okay, you have an x squared minus 16, or in this case, x squared minus 64. You almost want to think of this as x squared plus 0x minus 16 because there are no x's in there. And you would read it the same way then. What multiplies to 16 and subtracts to 0, well, that's 4 and 4. Now, I would say bigger number gets the sign in front, but really there is no sign in front because there was no x's. Well, the only way that you can multiply and get a negative 16 is if one of the values is negative and one of them is positive. This is called a difference of squares. And if you can just see right away that you have a number on the end that's a square root, so x squared minus, uh, or a number you can take a square root, so in this case, <coughs> 8 and 8 gives you 64, you can automatically say right away x plus minus x8 plus 8 and minus 8, just like that. Okay, now on this page, 3, 5, and 8 are a little bit different because <clears throat> you have a number out in front. So I'm going to do number 8 first. What I'm going to look at right away, I have a number out in front. I'm going to see, can I divide all of those by that same number? And yes, I can. I can divide all three of those uh, terms by 3. And that would leave me x squared minus 6x and plus 9. And then I just factor that the same way. What multiplies to 9 and adds to 6, well, that would be 3 and 3. So x with 3, x with 3. <clears throat> Bigger number gets the sign in front. Well, in this case, they're the same uh, value, so they're both negative because there's no bigger between 3 and 3. Now, the other issue, I said right away I divided this by 3. It's like I factored out a 3. I need to keep that value of 3 out in front, and that's how you finish the problem. Okay, number three works the same way. I have a number five, <clears throat> I have a five out in front, I'm gonna divide everything by five to begin with. However, they all also have an x, so really I'm going to divide by five and x. So five x is going to end up out in front of my answer, okay? With that <clears throat> in mind, after I divide by five x, I'm at x squared plus four x plus three, and now I just have, again, a simple trinomial that I can factor. Things that multiply to 3 and add to 4 are 3 and 1. Bigger number gets sign in front. Positive times positive gives you positive, and there's your answer. Number 5 is a little bit different. I have a 4 out in front, so I'm going to look and see, can I divide by 4? Well, I can't divide the 10 by 4. So what's something I can divide both those guys by? I can divide both by 2. And then I'll look at the variables. Just like in number 3, they all had an x. 
In here, everything has an x, and actually they both have a y. So I'm really going to pull out a 2xy in front. When I divide by the 2xy, I'm left with 2x in this first term, because the y goes away and one of the x's goes away, plus 5 times, well, x and y both canceled out. So I'm left with 2x plus 5. I can't factor this anymore. In number 3, I had something that was uh, able to be factored. 2x plus 5 is not factorable, so there's my answer. 2xy times 2x plus 5. Let's look at the next page and jump around a little bit as I have the answers already on the board, of course. <clears throat> Number 9 is very straightforward. Uh, we'll just read it from right to left again. What we'll multiplies to 33 and adds to 14 is 3 and 11. Bigger number is 11, it gets the sign in front. Positive times positive gives you a positive value in the end. Okay, so make sure you confirm though. Just because you have positive, positive here, uh, or if you have, say, negative, negative here, doesn't mean that your values are both going to be negative as well. You have to go through that same process every time. Bigger number always gets the sign in front. The then secondary sign, you have to figure out by multiplying through. Positive 11 times what kind of 3 gives you positive 33. <clears throat> number 10, I have a number in front, so I'm going to try to divide by that number. Divide everything by 2. And kind of like the, one of the last problems, number three on the last page, they each have an x. So I'm going to divide out a 2x to start with. That'll leave me with 1x squared minus 9. Well, anytime I have two terms with a minus in between, I'm thinking difference of squares, uh, just like the couple we have on the last page. So what I can do with that, I can take the square root of 9 and get 3 and negative 3 when I take the square root. The difference is, though, if you look at 11, you might be thinking, well, hey, I can do x minus 5, x plus 5, because I have x squared and a 25. The issue is, again, if you wrote this out the full way, x squared plus 0x plus 25, you would read this, what multiplies to 25 and adds to 0? There's no such thing. That number cannot exist. So this uh, little trick of this difference of squares, it only works if it's that, a difference, a subtraction of squares not addition. So if you have addition, there's nothing you can do with that problem. <clears throat> 12 and 13, back to a couple standard ones real quick. Uh, things that multiply to 6 and add to 5, those two numbers are going to be 3 and 2. Bigger number gets signed in front, so that's negative. Negative times what kind of 2 gives you a positive. They're both negative. So like I said, just because you have negative positive as your two signs here does not mean that's the signs you're going to get in your answer. 13, two numbers that multiply to 15 and subtract to 14 will be uh, 15 and 1. Don't forget about that nice and basic easy one. Positive 15, it's the bigger number, it gets the sign in front. Negative 1 because you multiply those numbers to get negative 15. Okay, last two. A couple of fun ones. <clears throat> 14, what I'm looking at here is the fact that, well, hey, it's x cubed, not x squared, so something's going on. They all have an x. Divide out an x to start with. Gives you x squared minus 4x minus 21. So I factored out an x, so I'm going to need it out in front. Make sure I would write it down like that right away in my answer box. <clears throat> Two numbers that multiply to 21 and subtract to 4 are 4 and 7. The bigger number is 7, it gets the sign in front, which is negative. Negative 7 times positive 4 gives you the negative 21 that we want. And again, don't forget the x that was out in front. Okay, and finally, number 25 is big and nasty. All you're looking at with this <clears throat> is the fact that, well, I got numbers in front. What can I divide all those by? Well, I can divide them all by a 5. I also look and see, well, they all have x's. Actually, they all have an x squared at the very least and they all have a y squared at the very least. So that's going to be what I'm going to have out in front, and I'm just going to divide each one of those by 5x squared and y squared. When I do that, my second term, 25 divided by 5 is 5, x cubed y squared, all I'd have left would be x once I took this x squared y squared out. This becomes negative 4, the x squared went away, I still would have y cubed left, and this last one, when I take out a 5, I'd still have a 3 left, I'd still have an x squared left, and I would still have a y remaining. That's a very uh, more complicated looking one. There's no way to factor that any further. You are done right there at that point. Okay, last thing I wanted to mention though, 
is let's just say, for example, on number 12, I was given that this equals zero. So all that means is you factor it, you set it equal to zero, you set each of these individual factors equal to zero. X minus three equals zero, which means X would equal three. X minus two equals zero, which means X would equal two. That's the way that problem works. And also looking at this one, how different the problem is, if it was the exact same thing but minus six instead of plus six. In this one, the two numbers that multiplied to six and added to five were three and two. In this case, two numbers that multiply to six and subtract to five would be one and six. So you would have a completely different answer of x minus six and x plus one based just off of that sign change right there. So make sure you really pay attention to what the signs are saying. There it is, best of luck. Take a good care of business.